Hello, everybody. This is uh, lesson number five in Math 100, and the topics are percentages, uh, proportions, and the use and misuse of percentages. All right. So you probably will not spend a day of your life uh, without hearing about or talking about percentages. Uh, it is a big part of our um, life around us. And uh, unfortunately, like everything else, percentages can be used effectively or could be used in a misleading way. So we'll be studying uses and misuses or uses and abuses of percentages. All right, again, very practical topic. And by the way, if you are following this in the book, uh, this uh, lesson covers section 2.1 as well as section 2.5. There are a little bit of duplication between those two sections. So we'll cover 2.1 and 2.5 at the same time. Here we go, percentages. Okay, folks, this is lesson number five. So again, this covers sections 2.1 and 2.5 of our book. The topic is basically percentages. All right, so I will do a very basic review of percentages because I know that for some of you, uh, it's been a while since you studied mathematics or if, um, um, well, since you studied arithmetic in general. And so uh, maybe you do remember this. If you do remember this, that's great. Uh, but I am very aware that um, uh, there are many people in our society who uh, really never um, quite understood how to calculate percentages. All right, we need to get this down very well first so that we can learn how to use and how, to, how not to misuse it, okay? And the most importantly, uh, I'll be emphasizing this question, how can possibly, how can percentage figures possibly be misleading or misused? Well, unfortunately, people have manipulated numbers in such a way that uh, you know it is correct, but it could be quite misleading. And uh, so I am um, uh, aware of these, and I do want you to be aware of these because we'll hear percentages all over. I mean, all the time, right? Uh, there's not a single day when you don't hear about percentages. Probably you will not hear any speeches, especially political speeches or speeches about uh, policy where you don't hear percentages. And I don't want you to be misled or misguided, uh, especially by these people who cleverly use percentages. By the way, uh, before I go, I should mention, and this is an advertisement for our non-credit classes. Some of you probably do not know, we have completely free um, classes that we offer at COC. All right, so these are not in the math department, but these are offered by non-credit departments. If you're looking at the online schedule of classes, what you should do is to look for not the math classes, but non-credit math classes. All right, so it'll be under the N, the letter N, of course, non-credit mathematics, and there are eight courses listed. Uh, we have just started offering these classes for the fall of 2020, and uh, NC math uh, we have four sections, zero, zero, I mean, not four sections, four courses. You have zero, zero, 001 all the way to zero, zero, 008. And uh, in particular, I highly recommend that you, um, you look into NC, non-credit math four and math five. Now, why am I emphasizing these two out of the eight? Because four has to do with percentages, all right? So if you uh, feel like you need extra brush up on these things I will be talking about in just a second, uh, then you may want to sign up for Math 004. Uh, you can sign up for this pretty much anytime. I think uh, they say like the first eight or 10 weeks of the uh, a regular semester. And uh, it is completely self-paced, almost all online, perhaps all online. And uh, you will basically be doing uh, questions and problems and drills under the supervision of an instructor. How much did I say it's going to cost you? Completely free, okay? How much is a textbook? There is no textbook, okay? And how much is this online uh, homework uh, usage or access code? There is no access code. You just go into the system that we use called My Open Math, and uh, everything is free. No registration fees, no um, nothing, okay? And by the way, this is open entrance, open exit. If you don't like it, you can just quit and walk out. It is not a part of your transcript. You will get a pass or fail. Um, at the end, but uh, it's not going to in any way influence your GPA or your transcript. Um, this is a great deal. I mean, in, in, you know, in what other um, 
part of life do you get an instruction like this free with a with an instructor with a certified you know competent instructor showing you how to do problems and how to um how to do how to learn these things and so math 04 that's uh, percentages and then math 005 this is rates and proportions this is also relevant for this lesson and i think uh, next couple of lessons all right so and uh, you can again you can study these on your weekends if you'd like all right and so these are highly recommended it's not too late to sign up for these courses all right so make sure you uh, look into it if you think you need some extra help or if you think you can use some extra help all right so what does the word per cent mean? Well, per cent, you know what a cent is? It's a penny. Uh, it means one uh, out of a hundred. So it's basically a per cent. So this is actually very important because it tells you one per cent is one over a hundred. This is the fraction representation of 1%. The decimal representation is 0.01, okay? Now I'll be frequently using the decimal representation because I mean, that's really what, what the mathematical uh, uh, expression is for 1%. So in other words, 50% will be uh, often written as 0.5, okay? In fact, if you have a scientific calculator and not, a, uh, not an, an arithmetic 99 cent calculator, if you have a scientific calculator, you may be surprised that you will not see a percentage button because we don't need the percentage button on the calculator. All you need is a decimal point, which every calculator has. So for 43%, you enter 0.43. For 100%, you put one, okay? So that's what a percentage means. Now the percentages are used to indicate fractions. You know, you could say 45% of the population have uh, a, certain, a certain item or something. Um, it could also be representing some changes, right? Um, the number of unemployment people have risen by a, a, a certain percentage and differences. Okay, the basic equation is as follows. And again, um, and, and there are different ways of thinking about this, but I think this is perhaps the best way to learn this. You have three numbers involved every time you talk about a percentage, all right? So you have the part that you're concerned about. See, you have this part and then you have the whole. The whole B, not H-O-L-E, okay, but the whole W-H-O-L-E. This is the basis, and this B is like our universal set. It's the 100%. It's, the, um, it's everything that we are concerned about, uh, uh, of which A is just a part. And then we talk about the P, the percentage of A in, uh, in the set B, all right? So here's the way uh, we think about this. Uh, if you have 20 people out of 100 people, 20 people out of 100 people, of course, that's 20%, right? Well, if you divide 20 by 100, you get 0.2, which is the same thing as 20%. But the percentage, because it's a hundredth of a unit, you multiply this by 100 to get the percentage number, okay? So um, you could also say something like this, A over B is equal to P over 100. This is the proportion uh, representation of um, the, the percentage concept, all right? And maybe this is a, a better way to talk about this, all right? So for instance, when you say uh, 42%, that's really 42 over 100, and that's 0.42. For instance, if you have 42 people who got sick out of a, a group of 100 people, you say 42% got sick, right? Or you'd say 420 people out of 1,000, that's still 0.42 or 42%. Um, okay, again, this number B is very important, all right? So this is called B basis or reference, a reference number. And there is one strong clue to find what the reference number is because really, I mean, unless you know what the reference number is, the percentage does not mean anything. And uh, conversely, the percentage means a whole lot more only, uh, you can know a lot more about percentages only when you know what the reference is. And that's where the leading and the misleading and misinformation and the misuse of percentages basically come from. The reference um, is, you know, when we say like 42 out of 100, you remember, did, did you just hear what I said? 42 people out of 100, out of 
So this is almost always, okay, this reference is almost always preceded by the word of or out of, okay? And the English language is constructed in such a way that um, when you talk about the reference or the whole, you almost have to have the word of, okay? Um, you know, again, uh, half of the people or 90% of the citizens of this country or something like that, right? Um, you have to use the word of almost always, okay? So that's a, a big clue to tell you what the reference number is. All right, so let's say 45% of 100 is, what is that? It's of course 45. Wait, how do we just get that? Because I just said 45 out of 100 is 45%. But then what happens if the reference number is different? 45% of 700 is, okay. So for this one, you would have to convert this 45 to uh, uh, point, uh, forty-five percent to 0.45. And then you multiply this by the 700, which is the reference number. Remember one, 100% is one of times 700. 50% will be 0.5 times 700. So if you are looking for, and remember, this is your percentage P, and this is your number of something. So that's B, right? You're looking for A. When you're looking for A, you multiply the percentage with a base. And so this number is 315, and so the answer is going to be 315. All right, now, if this is like too really easy, and you're completely bored, you're about to fall asleep, that's, I mean, that's, that's not great that you're falling asleep, but it's good that you already know this, okay? I just review and make sure you can do this in the second page and on your worksheet and in your homework. But if you feel like, well, you know what, I, I am sort of um, not very good at this, this is the opportunity to learn this. And if you still need extra support, sign up for uh, non-credit math 004. All right, so um, looking for A, if you're looking for A, you multiply. Basically, you multiply most of the time. Okay, so how about this? If 27% of all the students in a particular school, and the school has 810 people, if 27% of all 810 students um, say uh, were absent today because uh, some virus is around, okay, then, and, oh, I'm sorry, that's not what it says. If 27% of all the students is 810, so this uh, is saying, this is, a, uh, this is a percentage P, right? And if the 27% of all the students is 810, that's your part A. We don't know how many students are in this, uh, in this group, right? If 27%, like here, is only 810 people, then the entire school population is what? See, we don't know what this um, entire population is. That's your basis. That's your base. That's your reference number. In order to find B, you have to do one particular thing. Okay. Now, let me just show you what's going on here. We are saying two, uh, 27 out of 100. That's, you know, 27%. Uh, uh, that's equal to the part 810 out of something, right? We don't know what that number is. So this is actually a proportion problem. We say uh, two equal fractions, that's called a proportion, right? And um, the way we solve this, you know, again, in mathematics, we have this understanding that two fractions are equal uh, if and only if this product is the same as that product, okay? You probably saw this and heard this as multiplication or cross multiplication. So 27 times whatever this number is, is 810 times 100. Okay, so to get this number here, you divide both sides by 27, all right? And so that's how you find this. Now you can do it this way. I'll show you a little, uh, I think a simpler way to do this. In order to find the entire population, which is the denominator, which is you know this number B, uh, if you're looking for the reference number B, what you do is you divide uh, A by the, um, well, not, not B, okay. A by the uh, percentage written as the decimal number. Now, the reason you do this is because of the, the 100, okay? So here, what you have to do is to take 100, uh, 810 and divide it by 0.27, okay? Because remember, 27% is 0.27, right? And by the way, um, 
in, before you do this kind of a calculation, let's try to uh, estimate the question, estimate the answer. If 27% of the population is 810, what's the population? Remember, this is about a quarter, right? I mean, 25% is exactly a quarter. So 27% is a little more than a quarter of the population, and that's 810. So the population is a little bigger than four times this number, right? So you know that the answer is about 3,000, a little more than 3,000. And that's something that you should uh, maybe just about 3,000, okay? So try to remember that. Uh, and why do I say 3,000? Well, because um, one fourth of um, some number is 800. So if you multiply 800 by four, you get 3,200. Not quite that. So maybe about 3,000, that's your rough estimate. And if you do this, um, 810 divided by 0.27, don't divide 810 by 27 because then you don't get the right answer. Uh, 0.27, remember, you write the uh, percentage as a decimal number, and the answer turns out to be precisely 30, uh, sorry, 3,000, okay, and that's your answer. So what I'm saying is um, 810 out of 3,000 constitutes 27% of the total population of 3,000, and by the way, if you do this, you also get 3,000. Okay, so uh, you can do the proportion method if you like, but I think it's better if you just divide this part by, um, so in other words, if you're trying to find the um, reference number, you do division, all right? And the way you do this is you divide the, the part, which is A, the numerator, by the decimal representation of the percentage number. Okay, all right, how about this, 30 out of, 100, uh, 1,500 is what percentage? This time we're just basically looking for the percentage, right? Remember the percentage is just the part divided by whole. And of course you multiply this by 100 to make that into the percentage um, figure. But you know, uh, A divided by B will give you the decimal equivalent, right? So in this case, you divide 30 by 1,500. Oh, by the way, when you divide a number by another number, it's basically a fraction. A divided by B is A over B. And so this is the same as saying 30 divided by 1500. And you know what that number is? Uh, it turns out to be 0 0.02, okay? And so 0 0.02 is the correct answer here, uh, represented as a decimal number. Let me just move this over to a uh, side here. I think I should be able to do this because I'm using this fancy tablet. Move, okay, so my formula moves. Look at that, all right, so cool. All right, so anyway, 0 0.02 in the decimal representation really is uh, 2%, okay? All you have to do is to move this small, that this, 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 <laughs> this, decimal point two places to the right, that's how you multiply a number by 100, so that's 2%. Okay, you can say 30 is 2% 2 of 1,500. All right, so this is, I mean, this is a very quick brush up or this very quick review of uh, how to calculate percentages. All right, and so I looked for, and there's a way to find A here. In order to find A, you multiply. In order to find, uh, B, you divide, and in order to find uh, the uh, percentage P, you also divide. And if you want to, you can multiply by 100% to get the, um, the percentage number. Okay, so uh, starting here, starting now, I'm going to give you uh, the ways to uh, use a percentage concept to represent change and difference, okay? So changes and difference can be represented, often are represented by percentages. And when the percentage is given to describe a change, that's called the relative change as opposed to the absolute change. And I'll tell you what the difference is in just a minute, all right? Here's one example. Suppose that the number of coronavirus patients increased from 34 to 37, okay? Now you can say that's the, the change of three, right? I mean, after all, 37 minus 34 is undoubtedly uh, absolutely equal to three. And because this number is absolutely true, well, I mean, other things are absolutely true, this is called the absolute difference. Absolute difference is the raw number, which is the difference between uh, the number before and the number after. 
uh, in describing the change, you, you always subtract the number before from number after. So it'll be 37 minus 34. And the answer is positive three because the number of patients increased by three. That's a positive number, uh, positive three. What percent increase is that? So what you do is you divide this number, okay, 37 minus 34, which is three, and you divide it by which number? The old number, okay? So this is our reference number. Reference is always going to be the old number. Now, why? Because that's, you know, that's our basis. We are comparing the change and the new number based on what it used to be. So 34 is the starting point. It is used as a reference number. And so it's a before number, not the after number. And that's always in the, on, on the, in the denominator. All right, so three divided by 34. If you do this calculation, you get 0 0.088 something, blah, blah, blah. All right, and so this, now remember you move this, uh, let me just give you, uh, show you a different color. Uh, in order to, to change this percentage, uh, to change this decimal number to percentage number, I mean, you're, you're multiplying this by 100, but the way you do that is to move the decimal point two places to the right. So this is the same as about 8.8888% or 8.88 or 8.8%. All right, so you could say, if you're writing a, an, an article or if you're giving a speech or something, you can say, yes, the number of coronavirus patients changed or increased by 8.8%. This is called the relative difference. Relative just means percentage. Okay, so the relative difference is 8.8%. And you say, well, that's just a little bit. I mean, it's 34 to 37, you know, maybe like three extra members of the same family got sick. And yeah, okay, you can't really know that much by describing the percentage, which by the way, is why uh, people sometimes use absolute difference. See, if you wanna minimize, uh, if you wanna say, you, look, everything's in control, you could say, you know what? All we just gained is three uh, new patients. I mean, that's not a big deal. If you want to emphasize the, the significance of these three people, if you want to say, hey, look, this is terrible, then you want to say, oh, but it's 8.8%. See, that's very fast growth overnight. And so, you know, and, and they're both correct, okay? So that's, um, uh, if you want to call this a use or misuse, I mean, maybe that is true, but uh, both of these are true, okay? Now, again, one is called the absolute difference and the other is called the relative difference. So make sure you, understand that. Okay, number of uh, part C. Now this time we'll talk about not the change. See, change has to do with time, right? This time we're just talking about the difference between two things. Let's say you have a car. I have a car. Actually, I don't. I don't have a car. I mean, I do have a car, but my car does not cost 40,000. I have never owned a car that is worth that much. And that's okay. I'm happy about it. My neighbor's car, let's say is 50,000. Okay, do not covet your neighbor's car, right? But let's say I have a neighbor who has a $50,000 car, my car is $40,000. What's the difference? Well, it's, that's easy, right? Uh, because part A, how much more is my neighbor's car compared to mine? That's easy because all you have to do is 50,000 minus 40,000. And you say, is this really a college course? Yeah, I know, I mean, this part is just too easy, right? Um, and so you do the simple calculation and then you find out, oh, what happened? The answer is 10,000. And you're absolutely right uh, that my neighbor's car costs more than uh, $10,000 more than my car. And so this $10,000 is called the absolute difference, okay? It's really just a subtraction, the result of a subtraction. Now, not part B. Part B is tricky. Uh, question, how much less is my uh, car compared to my neighbors? Okay, well, um, I am going to, uh, I should, you know, I should, Paul, you know, I, I'm gonna take it back, okay? I, 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 I don't mean to ask this kind of question. I, I mean, this is right, but uh, look, look, A says how much more, right? And the answer was 10,000, uh, 10, if you're looking for the absolute difference, okay? If you're asking how much more, in terms of the percentage, you know, how much, what, by what percent, okay. Um, so 
how much percent or what percent is my neighbor's car uh, more compared to mine? So then that question becomes a little different, okay? In other words, my neighbor's car is how much, or what percent more than my car? Then the question becomes different. Uh, different. All right, so let's answer that question. Uh, let's compare percentage-wise um, how much more my neighbor's car is compared to mine. All right, so the difference, remember, is 10,000, right? And then you divide it by, and since you are comparing to mine, I divide this by 40,000. And 10,000 divided by 40,000 is 0.25, which is 25%. Okay, now, um, I'm gonna tell you something very important here. I, I, I hope it's not confusing. 20% is the relative difference. So in other words, I can say my neighbor's car costs 25% more than my car, and that is a correct statement. And I have just described the relative difference of his car compared to mine. Okay, now look at part two, and I will probably pause my, uh, what's going on here? Pause my, um, <clears throat> uh, this part of the video uh, at this point, uh, but let me just ask you this first. How much less is my car compared to my neighbor's? Right now, again, my car is $10,000 less than his car, right? Or his, my neighbor's car, my neighbor's name, Fred, right? So my, name, my neighbor, Fred, has a car that costs $10,000 more than that. And when I ask this question, how much less is my car compared to my neighbor's car? So now the reference becomes his car, all right? So then the answer is gonna be different, even though the second part here, part B, is also the relative difference. This will be the relative difference based on his car value, all right? So I want you to think about what that could be and try to answer the question. And I will stop my part one here and uh, at the beginning of part two, I'll answer that question, okay? I'll see you in just a bit.